of the spirit and the meaning and the belief of American democracy that I do impeach the president of the United States. When Bella first ran, it was considered such a unicorn event. There just weren't that many women running. Well, we're taking a turn to the dramatic today with Jeff L. Lieberman, the director of a new documentary about the legendary New York Congresswoman, Bella Abzug. So the documentary opens next week. I wondered, curiously, why did you pick Bella Abzug as your subject? Well, I felt like Bella Abzug's story had never really been told properly uh, in this full form with a full context of her entire life. Um, I felt like it was overdue that um, her legacy is really um, something that we should all look to um, for what she did for the city of New York, um, for women, for gay people, for a long list of uh, really important uh, accomplishments. But she also broke the glass ceiling, I think, in a way for women to run for elected office, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And that was her goal, 50-50 equality in all walks of life, in all matters of leadership. And we've made great strides there, but we've never quite gotten to 50-50 that Bella saw and wanted. But, you know, she um, she ran for other offices, but she did win for Congress, but she ran for mayor, she ran for Senate. And um, in your documentary, you hint that people were out to get her, that the, the FBI, the CIA, the Nixon administration. Tell me about that, and how did you reach that conclusion? I think people saw Bella as a threat to the institutions that existed. Um, Bella saw Congress as very patriarchal and uh, not accessible to women. And uh, she saw institutions in New York City the same way. Um, the CIA and the FBI were tracking her. Why? Uh, according to them, they thought she was dangerous. They thought she was a threat to their organization in particular. Um, she was a Vietnam activist, so a lot of the activists from that era were put on these lists and were tracked. Um, she, you know, she was obviously an enemy of Nixon's, but many people were. And so, you know, there's these organizing forces that potentially were trying to keep her from having more access to uh, confronting them. Um, you saw her gerrymandered in her very first year uh, and put against another uh, liberal Democrat uh, in New York City, uh, pitting the two of them against each other so one would lose. Um, so you see all these uh, elements happen. Was it that she was a woman, that she was brash, that she wore hats and was not afraid to take prisoners? What was it? I think she saw that there were, uh, there was corruption of power. I think that was the ultimate thing. And they were afraid of being exposed? Potentially. Or the system sort of crumbling and more people like her coming in and, and challenging the whole thing. You mean, God forbid, women should get elected to office? Right, but also she didn't just see any women, any woman. She wanted to see people who really fought for um, for equal rights and for holding up the Constitution and, and the values of the country. Well, she also tried to challenge the status quo. She mm -hmm. wanted women to be able to get their own credit cards, for example, right. which was hard to believe, but they had to get somebody to sign for them at the time? Right. Up until the legislation that Bell introduced, women could not get credit cards or loans in their own name. They would have to have a husband's signature, a father, or some other male figure. Uh, and this is in the mid 70s, if you can believe it. I mean, it's shocking. If, if you live through that era, maybe it's not shocking. It's shocking to people, I think, today. Um, and Bella introduced legislation that changed that. And that also challenged the system. I mean, that's, that's taking the power away from the men um, who had the ability to say yes or no. So was it just that she was a woman, or was it more that the positions that she took challenged the system and the system didn't like that? I think it's a bit of both, but it's, it's certainly Bella's um, agenda, certainly the values that she stood for. I mean, there were other women in Congress, too, that were potentially less of a threat. Um, what, were they tracked as well? No. Were they what? Tracked by the FBI, the CIA. Not necessarily. Like, Shirley Chisholm was a major force in her own way, but I don't know if, if those institutions saw her as the same threat as they did Bella. Um, but the CIA was also tracking Bella long before she ever ran for Congress. So they were threatened by her, you know, maybe going back to uh, the McCarthy era.
So tell me about your process. Like, how do you choose a subject, and how did you choose, and what research did you do about Bella Abzug? So first I checked to see if there was anything that had really been done on Bella in a major way, um, and I felt like there really hadn't been. I saw that there were so many interesting women um, of today's era that supported her, and through their celebrity behind her to get her elected, Barbara Streisand, Shirley MacLaine, uh, Maxine Waters, and Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, all were sort of mentored by Bella in, in a way, or Bella trailblazed this way for them. And so I thought if they wanted to pay tribute to her through this film, that would also lead to a really interesting uh, film-going experience for the audience to see this passing of the torch to this generation that we all know. Um, people may not know Bella's name, but they know obviously Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi, uh, and there's a direct link between all of them. Um, and in terms of research, I went through the archives here at CBS, at NBC, at ABC. Uh, there was a lot of great material that had been not seen in 50 years that I dug up. You had home movies as well, right? Home movies from the family that were really uh, I, you know, eye-opening to see Bella as a young woman um, in her 20s and 30s and with her husband. That was really important to the film, too. So uh, make the elevator pitch. Tell our viewers why should they see this film? Why? Will, what will they get from it? We have about 30 seconds left. Sure. I think if uh, you care about equality, if you care about equity, if you care about um, gay rights, women's rights, um, equal pay, like all the issues that we're talking about today, abortion, gay marriage, are the issues that Bella fought for 50 years ago. And we're still battling them out, and Bella was you know, leading the charge. Okay, we're going to have to leave it right there for now, but we'll be right back.